The distal femoral nail, or DFN, is a locking nail made of titanium for the stabilization of fractures of the distal femur. This nail can be used to treat extra-articular type 33A1 to A3 fractures and supra-diacondular type 33C1 to C3.1 fractures. It can also be used for diaphyseal fractures in which intramedullary nailing from the retrograde approach is indicated. For example, in the case of femoral shaft fractures in combination with ipsilateral fractures of the tibia and or the patella, in the presence of proximal or distal endoprosthesis, and in cases of adipositis per magna. The DFN is available in a short version with a length of 160, 200, or 240 millimeters, and in a long version with a length of 300, 340, 380, or 420 millimeters. It comes as a solid nail with a diameter of 9 or 10 millimeters or as a cannulated 12 millimeter nail. Proximal locking is usually performed using 4.9 mm self-tapping bolts. The longer nails may be locked dynamically through an oval hole in the anteroposterior direction and or statically through a hole in the AP direction and or through a second static hole in the lateral medial direction. The shorter nails are locked proximally through static holes with two 4.9 mm bolts placed in the lateral to medial direction. There are two options for distal locking. Standard locking, shown on the left, and spiral blade locking, shown on the right. The standard locking method is indicated for non-osteoporotic bone and a simple supracondylar fracture morphology. Locking is achieved by means of two 6 mm self-tapping locking screws and an end cap. In patients with fractures in osteoporotic bone and fractures with an extended supracondylar comminution zone, spiral blade locking is recommended. A more stable retention is achieved through the larger contact surface of the spiral blade, which allows a better distribution of the axial load exerted on the condyles. For this method, a spiral blade, a 6 mm locking screw, and a pink end cap are used. For the procedure, the patient is placed in the supine position on a radiolucent operating table, and the knee of the injured leg is flexed at 70 to 90 degrees. For supracondylar and diaphyseal fractures, either a medial parapatellar or a transligamentar incision via the ligamentum patelli can be made. For supradiacondylar fractures, which usually first require a screw fixation of the joint fracture, a medial parapatellar incision is appropriate. The entry point of the nail is in the axis of the medullary canal, just below the crest of the intercondylar notch, so it lies anterior and lateral to the proximal attachment of the posterior cruciate ligament. Needed for the insertion of the guide wire and for the opening of the medullary canal are the 17.0-15.0 protection sleeve, the 15.0-3.2 drill sleeve, the 3.2 mm calibrated guide, and the 13 mm cannulated drill bit. The guide wire is inserted 10 to 15 cm into the medullary canal in the AP direction and in the sagittal projection along the axis of the femoral shaft. In doing so, the 7 to 9 degree valgus angle of the axis of the femur must be considered. To open the medullary canal, the protection sleeve and drill sleeve are pushed over the guide wire onto the notch, and with the drill bit, the medullary canal is opened to a depth of approximately 30 millimeters. The drill bit, protection sleeve, and guide wire are then removed. The knee joint is carefully rinsed to remove all drilling debris. To mount the insertion handle onto the nail, the connecting screw and the pin wrench are used. 
With the insertion handle facing laterally, the connecting screw is inserted and the teeth on the handle are aligned with the corresponding notches in the nail. The curvature of the implant must be aligned with the anterior curvature of the femur. The inscription anterior on the nail helps avoid confusion. The connecting screw is then tightened with the pin wrench. The nail is inserted by hand through the entry point and with gentle rotary movements into the canal. Sometimes light hammer blows are required to insert the nail. The final position of the distal end of the nail should be 2 to 5 millimeters beyond the articular cartilage. The insertion depth can be read from the ring marks on the insertion handle. The aiming arm is selected according to the planned locking method. For distal locking with the spiro blade, which will be demonstrated in this presentation, the gray aiming arm is chosen. For the insertion of the 6 mm locking screw, the turquoise triple trocar assembly is needed. It consists of the 4.9 mm trocar, the 8.0 4.9 drill sleeve, and the 11.0 8.0 protection sleeve. Also the 4.9 mm calibrated drill bit, the hexagonal screwdriver, and the 6 mm locking screw of the appropriate length. Now the aiming arm is mounted onto the insertion handle. The trocar assembly is inserted through the cranial hole on the aiming arm and advanced through a stab incision down to the bone. Then the trocar is removed. The screw canal is drilled with the calibrated drill bit. The length of the required screw can be read from the ring marks on the drill bit. The reading will only be correct if the drill sleeve is touching the bone. Both the drill bit and the drill sleeve are removed. The locking screw is inserted through the protection sleeve using the hexagonal screwdriver and screwed into the bone until the head of the screw touches the lateral cortex. Then the protection sleeve is removed. For the insertion of the spiro blade, the pink double sleeve combination is necessary. It consists of the 13.0, 13.2 drill sleeve and the 15.0, 13.0 protection sleeve. Also the 3.2 mm calibrated guide wire, the 13 mm cannulated drill bit, the spiral inserter with the connecting screw, and the spiral blade of the appropriate length. The sleeve combination is inserted through the caudal hole on the aiming arm and advanced to the lateral cortex. The guide wire is inserted until its tip only just protrudes from the medial cortex. The length of the spiral blade to be used is read from the ring marks on the guide wire. Then the drill sleeve is removed. The 13 mm drill bit is inserted over the guide wire and through the protection sleeve. The seat for the head of the spiro blade is prepared by drilling open the lateral cortex. The automatic stop prevents the drill bit from penetrating too far. The drill bit and the protection sleeve are removed. The spiral blade is mounted onto the spiral inserter by first sliding the connecting screw into the inserter, then placing the spiral blade over the teeth of the spiral inserter and tightening the connecting screw using the pin wrench. The spiral blade is advanced over the guide wire onto the bone with the spiral on the spiral inserter placed in the notches of the aiming arm. The spiral inserter and the aiming arm are designed so that hammer blows to the inserter cause the blade to rotate, 
which allows it to turn through the slot in the nail. The blade is inserted with light hammer taps to the connecting screw. The correct insertion depth is reached when the head of the blade is flush with the lateral cortex. The connecting screws for the spiral blade and the aiming arm are loosened and the inserter and the aiming arm are removed, as is the guide wire. Then the proximal locking follows, although it's not shown in this practical exercise. The connecting screw between the aiming arm and the nail is loosened and removed together with the insertion handle. Now the end cap must be inserted. As it fulfills three functions, its use is mandatory. It prevents bone in growth into the nail, locks the spiral blade at a stable angle, and prevents it from loosening. Using the screwdriver, the end cap is aligned with the longitudinal axis of the nail and screwed in tightly. The procedure for C fractures. In cases of intra-articular fractures, the condylar mass requires treatment first. After reduction of the fracture, the position is held with reduction forceps and before insertion of the nail is definitely fixed with two cancellous lag screws. These screws should be positioned as far ventrally as possible so as not to interfere with the nail, which is as a rule placed dorsally. In cases of complex articular fractures, drilling open the medullary canal millimeter by millimeter is recommended. When the nail is inserted, it can function as a reduction aid. The distal fragment can be threaded towards the proximal fragment. Needed for the removal of the DFNR, an extraction screw, and a hammer guide with slotted hammer. First, the end cap is removed. Then the extraction screw is attached to the spiral blade and tightened. After that, the hammer guide is mounted onto the extraction screw. The blade can now be removed with the slotted hammer. One locking implant has been left in the site to prevent the nail from rotating or sliding away proximally while the hammer guide is being attached. After the hammer guide has been attached firmly, the last distal locking implant is removed, along with any proximal locking implants. The nail is extracted with the slotted hammer.